Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about the MTD FNR transaxle and also going to show you a little bit about what I do to make these usable for racing purposes. And uh, also we'll going to take a look inside and we'll show you what these things look like uh, as they come and uh, what I do to change them up. So here's the unit we're talking about. Uh, these are very common found in the shift on the go or variable speed labeled uh, mowers. Uh, these are not shiftable, they have uh, one speed and it's basically a forward, reverse and a neutral. And uh, we're going to get rid of most of the internals in this uh, unit and I'm going to show you what I do to uh, make these things work. So this is what you'll find inside this unit. Extremely simple. You have two bevel gears that are driven by the input shaft and one little sliding collar which basically is your forward and reverse depending on what you select and that drives the whole unit. Uh, your differential is inside here. Uh, so we're going to get rid of most of this stuff. I'm going to show you basically what I keep besides the case. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So here's everything that I keep out of this unit. 90% uh, of the components are pretty much tossed and not usable. So the only things that I keep are the input shaft, the one of the bevel gears, the collar that locks the uh, gear onto the shaft. Uh, the brass bushings and the thrush washers. Uh, everything else is not really usable for what we're going to do here. So what we're going to add, you want to pick up a three-quarter inch shaft, keyed shaft, some five-eighths also. This is cut to the same length as the, sh the shaft that was inside that had a gear uh, machined on it. Uh, some key stock. We got uh, some lock collars, two five-eighths and two three-quarters. And we got some gears. Uh, here we have, I believe it is a 12 and a 26. So with the input gears and these gears, it works out to uh, 6.5 to one ratio. So basically uh, six and a half turns of the input shaft to one turn of the tire. So uh, those parts plus uh, some good clean cases. Uh, we got these all nice and clean for what we're gonna do. And uh, so we're going to set this up and uh, show you how I assemble it. So here we got the bottom half of the case all ready for assembly. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention before is that uh, these units here are cut to accept the uh, 6203 bearings that you can fit in the other peerless units. Uh, so make sure you pick up a couple of those along with the other parts. And uh, you'll also notice that I built out of old uh, scrap 2x4 here. This little box basically which will hold this in place so that it's not all rolling around and uh, they're kind of an odd shape and this kind of holds it nice and still so that we can uh, work on this. So for the first half of this assembly we have our axle shaft all together. We have our sprocket here uh, set in some keyway locked on and we got our two shaft locks inside here uh, with our brass bushings set in on both sides. Uh, we've got some thrust washers on both sides here along with our bearings. Uh, on this side we do have uh, a couple more of the uh, thrust washers which you might have to take apart a couple times to change uh, the amount uh, in order to line up with the front sprocket. Uh, the front assembly here will have the bevel gear which has to line up perfectly with your input shaft. So uh, you might have to take away or add a couple shims in order to get those lined up. So let's get on to the second half. So here is the front half of the assembly. Uh, and one thing I forgot to mention that the hub on this sprocket here, I ground down so that it was the same width as uh, the original sprocket that was machined onto the original shaft. So I ground that hub down so it's around the same width so that this bevel gear will sit in approximately the same place as the original one so that it lines up with your input shaft. So and we have our collar here which locks on which is keyed onto that and our shaft lock which locks it all in place. So you might have to take this apart a couple times to change the amount of shims in between here to place this forward or back uh, depending on the input shaft. So uh, you want to have that meshed in really good and not have any noise, any grinding or anything like that. And once you get that in place, then you can lock everything down. Uh, and then we can uh, we make sure your sprockets are lined up as well. 
and uh, we can get our chain on. So one other thing I forgot to add, uh, if you can, in case you haven't noticed, uh, we do need a chain for this to work. So uh, you will need some chain too, in this case it's number 40 chain. All these parts came from Princess Auto, there's nothing special, uh, nothing that had to be ordered for this thing to work. Everything's readily available, all these parts. And uh, you know, this type of thing has been done before, I'm sure. This is just how I do it, I'm sure there's different ways. Uh, you know, but this is what worked for me. Uh, you can change these sprockets to whatever gear ratio you want. You can do the math. Uh, I like the six and a half ratio kind of works out for me. And you can change your pulleys to kind of add from there, whatever works for you. But that's basically the uh, whole unit. Uh, you won't have to run oil in this. The chain just gets a little bit of lube every once in a while and a little bit of grease on this front uh front uh, sprocket here and uh, yeah that's the whole uh, thing so here's the unit all together again so uh, the cool thing about these things is that they're super easy to find they're super cheap uh, a few bucks in parts to get these uh, running like uh, like we got here today uh, but uh, they're half the weight as the other transaxles they bolt in the exact same way so they're easy to swap out uh, my favorite feature of these is we can dial in our gear ratio that we want right inside the box so that we can run our pulleys one to one. Uh, whether it be, a, like, I prefer a five inch pulley on our transaxle and a five inch on the engine. Uh, and all our gear ratio is built inside here. Uh, so that's one of my favorite features, uh, like I said, but it's also that it's super lightweight. Uh, they're super strong. They're very, very simple. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, seal up this case now also because there's we don't fill this up with oil we have a little bit of grease on our front uh, gears and uh, a little bit of chain lube on our chain periodically uh, one of the cases I have done I cut a little access hole here so that I could spray in some uh, chain lube with a little rubber plug uh, that's something you can do if you prefer uh, but that is the whole unit right there and they're super simple and uh, yeah that's it thanks for watching